Hello, today we'll be looking at this UNI-T UT210 clamp meter. I'd like to start off with saying that this is not a sponsored ad. Nobody paid me to get this and if it doesn't work properly it's going right back where I bought it from. So let's get started. I guess the first thing would be to cut the tape. So inside the box we have this uh, pouch. Open the pouch. And here's the meter. Has a little screen protector. Clamp on the end. Oh, actually the clamp is a lot springier than I thought it would be, which is a good thing. Buttons feel good. Oh, and there's batteries inside already. So we'll set that aside for now. Also in the pouch, I don't know, a little piece of fabric that broke off. Here's the calibration notice, I suppose. I don't know, I don't read Chinese. There's the manual. Again, all in Chinese. Uh, there's a little strap, I guess, to hold the uh, meter in place. And over here we have the leads. And undo this. So, yeah, not bad. The leads are pretty flexible. Ooh, this is really flexible. We've got the caps for the cat rating. I think, yeah. I think they come off. Oh, they just snap off. Oh, don't think I like that too much. Uh, probes aren't too bad in terms of sharpness. Looks like you can poke through some oxide layer. That's not too, too bad. And the other end they have little protectors. Well, it doesn't use a standard banana, I don't think. I don't know, they look a little small, we'll have to see. I'll set this aside, take a look at the meter. First things first, take off that, won't be needing that. So you have this click wheel to change through the different um, ranges. So you have AC volts, you've got continuity or resistance. You can see the, um, I guess the blue button here will change between resistance, diode, check, continuity. And uh, looks like a capacitor. Maybe it has uh, capacitance testing, I don't really know. Has a small amp range down to 2 amps. It has a 20 amp range, a 100 amp range. And I'm not sure what this uh, NCV setting is but we'll we'll have to figure that out so the leads on this actually go in the bottom here which means there's a lot of room here for this big LCD which is a good thing we'll have to check what kind of battery is in there later but yeah I got this basically because it can do um, DC amps at a very low range uh, in the milliamp range and well I'm an automotive technician by trade so that actually works out really well when you have customers coming in complaining of dead batteries all the time. Um, the other way of doing it is to set a um, regular multimeter in series with the circuit, but most of the times when we get low batteries, it's because of aftermarket accessories like alarms. And um, when you disconnect the battery to put the multimeter in series, um, the alarm reinitializes and flashes the parking lights and sometimes it'll blow the fuse on your multimeter. So using this you can make sure that the alarm is already initialized um, and just clamp around the, the cable and you'll be able to see the uh, parasitic draw.
Okay, so the most important thing to me for this meter, because I already have meters that read volts and, and at work we have a fluke meter too, so I, I, I don't worry about that. I need to be able to measure milliamps in the DC range um, through the clamp. So, this is what I've devised here. This is um, a 300 ohm uh, resistor measured like 304 or something on this meter. Uh, with a 5 volt supply and just this loop to bring it back to the ground. So first let's check with this meter how many milliamps we have and uh, I'm actually using the Unity probes on this which are standard size um, just to see if I like them or not. So I have uh, this set into the milliamp range. I'm gonna pull this link out because like I said you need to put your meter in series when measuring um, amps. And I'm just going to go from, oh, I'm going to switch this around. I'm going to go from the uh, the other side of the resistor back to the ground and see what we end up with. And like the, like 13 milliamps or so. Yeah, close enough. So, especially in the automotive trade, there's if you get a plus minus five milliamps, it's not going to make you or break you. Um, so, if we if we end up in the same ballpark as this, that's probably good enough. So uh, let's see what we get. So I'm going to put this link back on. Like this. I'm going to turn on the unity meter. So two amp range, and uh, it actually defaults. I don't know if you can see there, but it defaults to uh, AC. So we're going to have to press the blue button for DC and uh, it actually has a pretty high um, I guess uh, inductive coupling from whatever AC voltage is going around the house so I'm gonna zero that and then I'm gonna clamp this and try to try to face it uh, in the correct direction actually that's upside down I'm gonna clamp the other side and see if I can line up the wire between these holes uh, between these arrows, I mean, and uh, let's see what we get. Yeah, somewhere, yeah, 14, 15 milliamps. 14 milliamps, so that's that's close enough. This is actually worth the uh, time savings and the fuse savings um, instead of uh, putting your meter in series. So that's not bad at all. I just figured out what uh, NCV means. It's a non-contact voltage, so there's a little LED here and a um, little screen here. And if I move this close to the lights I'm using for this uh, video, see it goes off. So it actually tells you if there's current flowing without you having to touch the circuit, which is nice because I don't actually have a um, non-contact voltage detector, uh, so this works perfectly. Also if you if you can see it's really small it's really it's palm sized so this would be perfect you have no excuse not to have this around. Next I figured I'd do a AC test and uh, sorry if you can't see very well I tried to wrestle this all in, onto the screen here but here I have a, uh, a power supply from eBay providing 24 volts plugged into the wall and as you can see, I have my clamp meter around the uh, live wire. Um, in, I'm in North America, so the live wire is black. Don't ask me why. Um, and so the DC output is connected to this eye charger, uh, which is now uh, connected to a lithium polymer battery off screen. So just idle, um, it's taking 155 um, milliamps out of the wall. Uh, and that's probably to power, there's a fan right off screen here, uh, has power the electronics in here, and it's actually powering the uh, charger. But uh, let's see now when I start the charge. Now you'll see this uh, power supply is really sensitive to uh, output amperage and will boost up the fan so it might get a little loud, but let's see how it works. So I'm going to start it. It's checking the battery. There we go, outputting 2.3 amps at 11.55 volts and here we go we see the AC current has raised so so far it seems pretty good now let's see if I can switch uh, ranges yeah 
and showing us just about the same, just move the decimal and switch to uh, 100 amps, yep. I mean, it's getting less precise now because it's really, um, really high up there. Yeah, so it seems pretty good. Okay, now for accuracy, uh, I'm not like those YouTubers that have uh, super fancy, super accurate gear. What I do have are a lot of meters, so we can actually just check the average between these two meters, and that should be close enough to give us an indication. Um, and then measure with this meter, and uh, we should know, I mean, if it's in the right ballpark or whatever. So here I have a lithium polymer battery. You'll see it is a three cell battery, but it's in a sort of storage charge. So I'm guessing it'll be about 11.3 11, uh, 11 to 11 and a half volts, something like that. So I am using the Unity um, um, leads, but they don't have the caps on them because they it just it really annoys me. So here we go, we'll switch this to DC volts. I'm gonna stick the leads into here. Now you just gotta make sure not to short these leads because a lithium polymer battery will, uh, will catch fire if you short it sometimes. So um, we have 11.43 volts. And now I'm gonna switch this off, move the leads onto the next one. and then stick the leads into here again. And we have 11.41, so if we get anywhere between 11.4, 11.5, we know we're close enough, especially since uh, these meters were about um, 30 bucks Canadian on sale, and this uh, regular price on Amazon uh, is 55 bucks, which is extremely cheap for something that I can use um, at work, really. So, Let's see how that works. I'm stick the red into the red and the black into the black. Switch this to volts. Now, the one thing I don't like uh, being an automotive guy is that uh, this defaults into AC and you have to hit the green button, uh, the blue button to switch it to DC all the time. So that's a little annoying, but not the end of the world, right? So here we go, and survey says 11.45. So that's not bad. We're uh, just a little bit higher than this one and a little bit even higher than this one, but uh, that's usable. Uh, I mean, if you're tracing down uh, a fault and you see 11.45 or 11.40, uh, it won't change very much in your diagnostic tree. So not bad. So overall, this thing isn't bad, actually. I was expecting much worse for the uh, for the $55 Canadian this is worth. Um, I was actually expecting that I'd have to send it back. I'm glad I don't have to. Um, there's a hold function and a backlight uh, as well that I haven't mentioned. So this is actually upside down. So there's the backlight. There's the hold function. You press and hold backlight turns off so that's pretty good it's got a uh, cat 3 rating to uh, 300 volts and a cat 2 rating to 600 volts but uh, really I don't know these Chinese meters I'm not sure if I trust the cat rating so in my case since I'm using it mostly for DC I'm not too concerned about it but uh, the case is really sturdy which is really nice there's not much flex there's no creaking the spring here is very, very solid, so I would say that's a that's a big bonus because sometimes these things are floppy. I mean, even the machine we have at work uh, to diagnose charging systems, um, the spring is really floppy. It's no good. Um, there are uh, two AAA batteries in here, and I like that there's a screw holding it down. Yeah, this is a good meter, so I would recommend you buy one if you have uh, 55 bucks burning a hole in your pocket and you have um, the need for the DC amp reading uh, inductively because if you look at any other DC clamp meter this is really important a lot of the clamp meters that are cheaper are AC only it's much harder to do D DC uh, clamp measurements um, they're much more expensive than this one uh, now if you don't have any meter 
I would not suggest you buy one of these. I would suggest you buy at least something like this. This is not the top quality um, meter by any means, but I mean a fluke will run you a couple hundred bucks here in Canada, and so this uh, these Mastercraft meters are an an acceptable alternative that have reasonable accuracy. Like it'll get you in the right ballpark, and I've been using these successfully for a long time now. So. Yes, if you do need the clamp functionality, uh, definitely get one of these. If you don't, then definitely get one of these. Thanks for watching. If you like this review, uh, hit the subscribe and the like. If you don't like it, hit the dislike. And if you have any questions, stick them in the comments below. Thank you very much.